Welcome to the Ruckus Associates Smart Zone Administrator demonstration series for the Smart Zone OS 5 release. In this course, we will show you the functionality of Smart Zone OS 5 along with basic configuration of many aspects of the controller. In this video, we will provide you details on configuring wireless LAN groups within Smart Zone, allowing you to isolate different wireless LAN advertisements to specific areas that you choose. So let's get started. Creating wireless LAN groups allows you to broadcast your wireless LANs only where you want them, through the use of specific access point groups or only allowing specific APs to broadcast those specific wireless LANs. This is a good practice to isolate wireless LAN advertising from a hierarchical standpoint and will reduce your wireless LAN overhead to places that you might not want or need wireless LANs to be broadcast. The process of creating wireless LAN groups is similar to that of an access point groups. However, unlike access points, which can only belong to a single group, wireless LANs can be a member of more than one wireless access group. First, you need to create your wireless LANs. Next, create a new wireless LAN group and then add the wireless LANs to that wireless LAN group. It is important to know that if you do not remove wireless LANs from the default wireless LAN group, they will continue to be broadcast on any access points that are members of that default access point group. Let me explain it this way. Anytime you configure a new wireless LAN, it is associated with the default wireless LAN group unless you specifically place it in a wireless LAN group that you have pre-configured. If a wireless LAN was configured prior to a custom wireless LAN group being created, the wireless LANs will remain associated with the default wireless LAN unless you exclusively remove it from it. Finally, you'll associate the wireless LAN group to one of the existing access point groups that you've created earlier. Then, verify the wireless LANs are deployed as you expected. So let me demonstrate this for you within Smart Zone, allowing you to configure wireless LANs and then associate them with specific radios within access groups or specific APs themselves. Okay, here we are in Smart Zone, and I want to uh, first give you a lay of the land so we can understand where everything is and what exactly has been configured. First, we can see we have a single access point here. And we want to see which particular access group it's associated with. So we're going to click on the IP itself. We're going to be able to slow, scroll down here. We're going to see that it has many wireless LANs that it's associated with here. Uh, we, all of these. We're going to limit these because we do not want to have all of these advertised in particular areas. And so that's where the wireless LAN groups benefit us. We also see from an access group standpoint, it's in the Team X AP group one. So if we go over here, we'll be able to identify that access group. And if we had multiple APs within this group, we would apply a wireless LAN association to this access group, and then it would apply it to all the APs that were within that group. So we're gonna go to wireless LAN. And in there, we're going to be able to see we have four wireless LANs configured. Now, currently, these are all in the default wireless group. And I can see that by clicking on the default wireless group here, and all of them show up. So they're all associated with that group. We want to further isolate and be able to associate certain ones in another group only. So we're going to click on the Team X zone here, which is the zone. We're going to push the plus sign. Now when we do that, it's going to allow us to create an additional wireless LAN group or a new wireless LAN group. We're going to create a lobby group. We're going to name it that. And then we're going to click on a certain wireless LANs that we want associated with this particular wireless LAN group. So we're going to do the guest access and we want the point of sale to be accessible to people uh, within that front lobby. And so we're going to associate those with this wireless LAN group. 
Now the next option we have when we go to the next button is that we can override the, wire, the VLAN for these particular wireless LANs in this particular group if we so choose so. We can do that by a couple of options which would be pooling meaning that we could have multiple VLANs that would be associated through a hashing algorithm of them being chosen within those VLANs. We do need to pre-configure that and we do have another video that explains that in more detail. We can also just set a simple tag, meaning that if once we set tag here, we could create a VLAN or we could associate a VLAN with this particular wireless group for this particular access group uh, or the, those APs. And anybody that would be connecting to this wireless LAN would be associated with that VLAN 20. Now we're not going to change any of that here, but I wanted to make sure you were aware that you can make these modifications within the wireless LAN group if you so choose. You can also create and uh, specify a NAS ID as well for these particular wireless LANs. So I could go in there and do a user defined and I could put in a certain value here if we wanted to put lobby again or any kind of ID that would be sent to that radius server for authentication identifying this user from a particular logistic or from a specific AP if we so choose. Now both of these values that although we can modify we are going to keep them at default within this demonstration. Once we push OK there, we can now see that we have a new wireless group that is associated within the Team X zone, and it is Lobby. And we see only the two are associated within this wireless LAN group. Do note that once we go back to the wireless LAN group of default, we see them associated within this group as well. Now we could take them out of this default group and as we saw earlier with the access point, the default behavior is for a AP to be put into that default group. And so this means that any new AP that we have going in uh, would basically inherit all of these wireless LANs are be configured for these wireless LANs. Now, if we wanted to further isolate that or limit that, we could actually take some of the, these wireless LANs and take them out of the default wireless LAN group if we so choose. Let's go ahead and do that from the point of cell perspective. We're going to click on this one. We're going to click on configure. And we're going to remove that from the wireless LAN group. As you can see, it's, con it's configured and associated with multiple wireless LAN groups of default and lobby. But we can check the down box here. And we can uncheck the default, the default group there. We can click that, push OK. And now it does not show up in the default wireless group because it's only associated with the wireless group of the lobby that we just created. Now, this is all well and good, but we haven't configured any access points or any uh, wireless access groups to only associate with certain wireless LANs. And we need to do that by going back to the access points. We're going to go down to the access group itself. Click on that access group, and then we're going to configure it. So we're going to go up to the pencil. And then we're going to scroll down to these radio configurations. Now in the radio configurations, you can see we can do this per specific radio. We can actually override the default behavior, which is to be associated with the default wireless LAN group. And we're going to specify that to the lobby group now. We're going to do the same thing for the 5 gig radio as well. Now that both of those are associated with Lobby, the new wireless group I've created, I'm going to push OK. Now any of the APs that are associated for that wireless group that's been configured here, then we're going to see that it is going to inherit only those particular wireless LANs that are associated with the wireless group. Let's go into the configuration and verify that it does reflect that we've associated it with a specific wireless group now. And we do. We see on the, the 2.4 as well as the 5 gig radio, we have overridden the default behavior, which is the default wireless LAN group, and we have associated it with the lobby group as well. So once we have seen that, let's go to the AP and take a look now. We click on the AP, and then we scroll down. 
And we see now that it's only advertising the two wireless LANs that we have associated with the group in which it's configured for. If we go down to the radios, we can see now again the wireless LAN group is lobby for the 2.4 as well as the 5 gigahertz radios also. Now if we were to go back into this particular AP, not from the access group that we originally configured it from, but actually go to the AP itself, we can click on configure. And we can actually override those values again. We can go down to this and we could actually say, no, we want this particular AP, unlike the others within this access group, to be have a default behavior. So it's going to go back to the default wireless group. We're going to click on this one radio as well. We're going to offer default there also. We're going to push OK. And once we push OK, we're going to click on the AP again. We're going to scroll down and look at the wireless LANs that it's advertising. And it's advertising the three wireless LANs. Now, why is it not advertising the fourth, the point of sale? Well, that is because if we go back and take a look under the wireless LANs, we do not have that particular point of sale associated with the default wireless LAN group. We only have it associated with the wireless group of the lobby that we created. Because of that, the access point that we have configured, basically overriding its access group values, and it specifically is associated with the access group of default. And so it's only going to reflect the wireless LANs that are associated with that default wireless LAN group. This completes the video of the wireless LAN groups, and I hope you enjoyed it. I also encourage you to look at the other videos within this series, allowing you to learn more information about the SmartZone OS 5 release and its features. Thank you.